welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. Let's take a look at the headlines. President-elect Joe Biden's son is under investigation over his business dealings with China. Canada's latest country to approve Pfizer's BioNTech vaccine. Allergy warnings over COVID vaccine. EU and UK far apart in crucial trade talks in Brussels. France unveils plans to crack down on radical Islamist ideology. India calls Prime Minister Trudeau's remarks over farmers' protests ill-informed. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson doesn't answer to questions asked in British Parliament on farmers' protest. Australia says only India can satisfy world's demand for COVID-19 vaccines. US places Pakistan and nine others on violators of religious freedom list. Starting with President-elect Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, Investigation News. After pausing in moments before the election, federal authorities are now actively investigating the business dealings over Hunter Biden. A person with knowledge of the probe said his father, President-elect Joe Biden, is not implicated. Now that the election is over, the investigation is entering a new phase. Federal prosecutors in Delaware working with the IRS Criminal Investigation Agency and the FBI are taking overt steps such as issuing subpoenas and seeking interviews. Looking at the COVID situation, Canada's health regulator has approved the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine the day after the UK became the first country in the world to roll it out. Health Canada called the authorization a milestone in the country's fight against coronavirus. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says Canada is set to receive up to 249,000 dosages of the vaccine this month. In total, Canadian government has purchased up to 20 million dosages of the vaccine. Inoculate 10 million people with the option to buy 56 million more. On Wednesday, Health Canada approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine as safe and effective, Canada has already secured up to 76 million doses of this vaccine. We're expecting 30,000 doses to start arriving next week, with a total of almost 250,000 doses before the end of December. We also have six other agreements for potential vaccines, three of which are currently under review by regulators. We've reserved enough doses so that every Canadian who wants a vaccine will be able to get it before the end of 2021. Now talking about the allergy warning over the COVID-19 vaccine. People with a history of significant allergic reaction should not have the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID jab, regulators say. It came after two NHS workers had allergic reactions on Tuesday. The two people had the reaction shortly after having the new jab, had treatment, and are both fine now. Moving to the EU and UK crucial trade talks in Brussels. The UK said that there have been frank discussions about the significant obstacles which remain in the negotiations. Very large gaps remain between the two sides and it is still unclear whether these can be bridged. After a week of intensive negotiations, they informed me about the state of play and the remaining divergences. I had this evening um, a phone call with Prime Minister Boris Johnson on the ongoing negotiations between the European Union and the United Kingdom. We welcome the fact that progress has been achieved in many areas. Nevertheless, significant differences remain on the three critical issues, level playing field, governance and fisheries. Let's have a look at France's plans to crack down on radical Islamist ideology. The government of President Emmanuel Macron on Wednesday proposed legislation to outlaw a broad array of activity that defines as forms of Islamist separatism, from the abuse of homeschooling to online hate speech. Authorities have framed the legislation, which can be debated by Parliament in January, as a response to the spread of radical Islamism, the ideology that the government says aims to build a parallel society where religious rules override civil ones. Talking about Canada and India's recent diplomatic row, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative opposition leader Aaron O'Toole both made comments this week expressing concern over India's response to the demonstrators. 
Canada will always be there to defend the right of peaceful protest, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said last week. Prime Minister Trudeau mentioned the protests and called it a concerning situation. We're all very worried about family and friends, he said during the virtual celebration. We believe in the importance of dialogue, and that's why we've reached out to multiple means directly to the Indian authorities to highlight our concerns. It's wonderful to be here with uh, uh, Minister Sajjan, Minister Baines, uh, Minister Chagar, uh, all of our friends from the Sikh community uh, and uh, Sikh uh, members of parliament as well. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't start also by recognizing uh, the news coming out of India uh, about the protests by farmers. Uh, the situation is concerning and uh, we're all very worried about family and friends. I know that's the reality for many of you. Let me remind you, Canada will always be there to defend the right of peaceful protest. We believe in the importance of dialogue and that's why we've reached out uh, through multiple means directly to uh, the Indian authorities uh, to highlight our concerns. On Tuesday, India's foreign ministry spokesperson responded to the ill-informed comments by Canadian leaders. Such comments are unwarranted, especially when pertaining to the internal affairs of a democratic country, said Indian spokesperson. It is also best that diplomatic conversations not be misrepresented for political purposes. Canada is home to a large Indian population. In 2016, the census reported close to 2 million South Asian Canadians. Indo-Canadian community is quite upset with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's comments over Indian farmers' protest situation. On the other hand, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson doesn't answer to questions asked in British Parliament on farmers' protest. During question period in the United Kingdom's Parliament, Member of Parliament Tanmanjeet Singh Desi said water cannon, tear gas and brute force were being used against the Indian protesters and questioned the British government's position on the months-long demonstration. Prime Minister Johnson dodged the question and responded, Our view is the right honourable gentleman knows. Well, that is, of course, we have serious concerns about what is happening between India and Pakistan. So will the Prime Minister convey to the Indian Prime Minister our heartfelt anxieties, our hopes for a speedy resolution to the current deadlock? And does he agree that everyone has a fundamental right to peaceful protest? Prime Minister. Uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, and uh, uh, our, our views that the, the right honourable gentleman knows, uh, as the honourable gentleman knows uh, well, uh, is of course that uh, we have serious concerns about uh, what is happening uh, in, in, between India and, and Pakistan. But these are preeminently matters uh, for those two governments to settle, and I, and I know that he appreciates that point. Australia showing her faith on India said that only India can satisfy world's demand for COVID-19 vaccines. The 64 heads of missions in India arrived in the Hyderabad on December 9th. They visited Barut Biotech. After their visit, Australian ambassador to India, Barry O'Farrell, shared his views by saying, There are many vaccines being produced in countries around the world, but there's only one country that has the manufacturing capacity to produce sufficient quantities to satisfy the demand of citizens in every country, and that's India. Now, this is another example of a moment in which India will shine because of uh, the strength of this sector and the planning that's gone in. Uh, I, and I suppose that's not unexpected from a country that itself has suffered so many pandemics uh, in the past. Moving on to Pakistan, US places Pakistan and nine others on violators of religious freedom list. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo announced on Monday that the United States has designated Pakistan, China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Nigeria, North Korea, Myanmar, Eritrea as countries of particular concern, CPC. Under its Internal Religious Freedom Act, this statement accused these countries of engaging in or tolerating systemic ongoing egregious violations of religious freedom. That's all for you. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.